Python tutorial Random Forest Regression Supervised machine learning consists of finding which class output target data belongs to or predicting its value by mapping its optimal relationship with input predictors data. Main supervised learning tasks are classification and regression. This topic is part of regression machine learning with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Random forest regression consists of supervised learning meta-algorithm for predicting Apple target feature average by bootstrap aggregation or bagging of independently built decision trees. Bootstrap aggregation or bagging is used for lowering variance error source of independently built decision trees. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bryman, Random Forests, published in Machine Learning in 2001. Classification and regression trees algorithm consists of greedy top-down approach for finding optimal recursive binary node splits by locally minimizing variance at terminal nodes measured through sum of square errors function at each stage. As a formula, we have the minimization of sum of square errors equals to the sum from the first to the last of the difference between output target feature data minus terminal node output target feature mean and that result to the power of 2. Terminal node output target feature mean in turn is equal to 1 divided by m, m is the number of observations in terminal node, multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the output target feature data. Tree bagging algorithm consists of predicting output target feature of independently built decision trees by calculating their arithmetic mean. For random forests, a combination of random feature selection and bootstrap aggregation or bagging algorithms is used. Bootstrap consists of random sampling with replacement. As a formula, we have that independently built decision trees mean output target feature prediction is equal to 1 divided by k, k is the number of independently built decision trees, multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the independently built decision trees output target feature prediction. Great, so let's go into Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study random forest regression with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within Python PyCharm IDE. In this tutorial, we'll be working within Python tutorial random forest regression code file. So the first step within the tutorial is to do packages importing. So we're going to import numpy SMP, pandas SPD, and from scikit-learn, we're going to import its ensemble feature as ML for machine learning algorithm. The next step is to create data for random forest regression. This is done through data reading. So we create this variable SPY equals to PD or pandas that read underscore CSV. And then we have the path to the data file found within data directory. And the name of the data file, random forest regression data, as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. Index column as date, and we parse those dates as true. So let's go ahead and open the data file. As we can see, we have a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values. We have two columns of data, first of all dates, and then SPY adjusted. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. Notice that data has a daily frequency, and it's from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015, Therefore, nine years of data. So back into the code file, the next step is we're going to create target and predictor features. So first of all, we create the target feature, which is rspy equals to spy, the previously created variable, dot pct underscore change one position. So this is going to calculate the daily arithmetic rate of return of those spy adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. And we'll rename the corresponding variable name columns with its corresponding name RSPY. And then we create the predictor feature, which we're going to name RSPY1, 
which is going to be previous days returns. So what we do is from the previously created our SPY, we shift it one position and we rename its columns with the variable name as well. Then we're going to create a data frame where we are going to include both target and predictor features. So we're going to name it our SPY all initially equals to our SPY and then we join our SPY one and as this corresponding predictor feature, the one we shifted, the first observation will be a non-available. We're going to remove the full row for this data frame and we do so with dot drop NA. So once we read data and created target and predictor features, the next step is we are going to delimit training and testing ranges. Training range for algorithm training and testing range for algorithm testing plates forecasting accuracy. So we create first of all training range, our SPY T, T for training range, and then we have our SPY F, F for testing range. For the training range from the previously created our SPY all, we're going to select from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the beginning of 2014, therefore the first seven years of data as a training range. And for the testing range, we're going to select from the beginning of 2014 to the beginning of 2016, therefore the last two years of data for the testing range. Notice that this training and testing range delimiting was all included for educational purposes as an example, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. Within this tutorial, we'll only be working within the training range. So next we can continue with the random forest regression fitting. Notice that we'll be fitting two random forests. The first of this, our FT for random forest T because we're doing this within the training range. One, this is going to include just one tree and then we would have random forest T2 in which it's going to include two decision trees. So in both cases we'll be using ML feature from scikit-learn and we'll be using the random forest regression function capital R, F and R as well. Notice here that for the first random forest number of estimators that's the number of independent labial decision trees in this case it's just one and for RFT2 it's going to be two of them. The criterion it's going to be the mean square error. And then we have right here the maximum depth equals to one. That's the number of terminal nodes that we're going to include in each of the independent labial decision trees. So in this case, it's going to include two terminal nodes in each of those independent labial decision trees. Here we have maximum number of features, one, and we have bootstrap equals to true, meaning that it's going to be doing random sampling with replacement. Here, the maximum feature regarding the corresponding number of predictor features. So in this case, we only have one predictor feature, so it's going to include that predictor feature it's included to show the parameter from this calculation. Two very important observations regarding these parameters. The first is that these corresponding parameters were included for educational purposes, as an example. Therefore, they're not fixed and can be modified according to your needs. And also very important, you might obtain different results when doing your random forest regression fitting due to the bootstrap and the random seed used within its calculation. So then we proceed to fit and here we have first of all that predictor feature and as we have a single predictor feature which is previous days returns we need to reshape that corresponding column and we do so with numpy array and from our SPYT, T which is the train range we're going to select our SPY1 which is the predictor feature or previous days returns and we reshape it with minus one comma one and then we have the target feature from that same training range or our SPYT we select the column with current day returns. So notice that the rest is equivalent for the random forest T with two corresponding number of independent labial decision trees and the only difference is right here number estimators is one then two as we can see as we continue criterion to minimize the mean square error and so on the other parameters are equivalent to the ones above. And the last step is we're going to print the random forest regression fitting score. We do so by creating two variables, which is going to be random forest T for training range S for score one and two one when there's random forest with one independently built decision tree and two with two independently built decision trees. And here we have from the previously created variables, we are going to calculate their score in which again, we have first of all, the corresponding predictor feature as we have a single predictor feature, we need to reshape it and we do so with numpy.array for that previously created training range. 
data frame, our SPYT, we select our SPY1, we reshape it with minus 1, 1, and then we have as a target feature from that same training range, our SPYT, we select the corresponding target feature, which is our SPY or current day returns. And then we're going to print the results for this random forest regression score and for the random forest with one independently built decision tree and then with two independently built decision trees we're going to print their scores with numpy rounded for four decimal places and the variables we just created above. So let's go ahead and run this code file. When you're doing it for the first time at any part of the code you click the right button on the mouse and scroll down into run the code file name but as I've run the code file before recording this video tutorial, the names will restore here and I just go ahead, select it and click run. Excellent. So right here in the console, we see how it ran the code. Notice that it printed the random forest regression score for the random forest with one independently built decision tree with two independently built decision trees. And then we have the score, which in this case, it's the R square or coefficient of the termination. And in this example, we see that as the number of independently built decision trees increased, the corresponding score also increased. As mentioned previously, you might obtain different results when doing your own random forest regression and the printing of the score, depending on the corresponding random seed used within the bootstrap. Excellent. So now that we finished studying random forest regression, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.